but it's essentially a mono white uh, list here. And it looks like we have our pairings ready to rock and or roll. So we are watching Tim J and we need the Fuge. Yeah. Fuge is looks a, like um, Naya Argo. Naya Argo. Agro. Agro. Ego, my wit. Let go of my ego. It's actually a mono white with uh, two splat with just splashes for two um, two cards. So it's just a it's almost like a mono white card. So a mono white aggro deck. But a lot of the the double lands and what have not does help a lot with the splash. Well, um, being the aggressive deck. Uh, it means he's really low to the ground. Oh, yes. And it looks like he has, like, pretty much turn two, turn three, if you need to, so. Yeah. So it looks like they could go with the Sentinel. Here. It looks like that's exactly what he's playing. Yep, yeah, looks like Sentinel. For zero value, it is what it is. Faithful absence. Uh, a turn two, uh, three two is very good. This wolf is phenomenal. Realm eater. No, I didn't pronounce it right. Well, it's gone. Well, yeah, it's pretty freaking powerful. Yes. Especially against so aggressive decks. So is the Skyclave operation, but that's a different story altogether. So, Reem, Reem, Reemeter. So now they can go farmland, and now they have Nyatron. No, it looks like the opera Nyatron. <laughs> So when you get your three colors, normally uh, when you play Tron, if you hit your three Tron lands, you yes. have Tron. Yes. But if you have, but if you hit all your three colors, right. Now, mind you, with the new set coming out, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some Tri lands coming back. I hope so. It's supposed to be the enemy Tri lands, is it not? I believe so. It might be the 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 other cycle. Yeah, the ones we didn't have. Yes. So Silver Quill coming down. I never really understood the power of this card. So you, they get a one, two, one, but you have to choose an opposite. No. So it's like it's you're either giving your opponent creatures or you're giving your opponent hard advantage. Mm -hmm. Like both sound really bad to me. Yes. Also sounding real bad that you have a commander down or a Thalia that's going to come down very shortly. Ooh. I haven't seen uh, Thalia being played in uh, standard. Standard. Historic, but that makes sense. Yes. You know, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Actually, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if a Blood Moon effect gets reprinted. But the, all the cheated, these mana effect, effects, there should be some sort of Blood, blood Moon. You can yeah, chat and yell at me 10 minutes later if, I, if I'm wrong. So, you think of the one that's being used. Um, if you think of the one that's being used in historic, yeah, the, that one comes in and you get to name a non basic card. Uh, and then when your opponent plays that card, it just taps for colorless and it has yes. no effects. That's a pretty, I forget the name of it, but that's a pretty good one. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Ooh, and this is where these channel cards come into play very hard. What does the now white channel card do? The white the channel card is, once I pull up the, the list. 
It deals four damage to attacking or blocking creature. This, uh, this ability costs one less to activate for each legendary creature you control. It's pretty good. So you can almost discard it, discard it for one white if they have enough legendaries. Which you can see in there, some of the on the higher end. Adversary. Oh boy, here we go. So I hear you like damage. <laughs> and not the emotional damage. Yeah, no, this is awesome. I, I am I'm really liking this uh aggressive uh, Yeah. How's that Ooh. Ooh. This is very cool. You know what else is very cool? Hmm. Draw in another emissary. You get to do the exact same thing and pump up the team. You can only pump it once, right? Because it doesn't have six mana. You would have to. You can pump it up uh, only once. Yeah, that still is pretty good. But attacking with a four-four, a four-three with first strike, and a five-three. Yeah, I really like attacking with value here with first strike. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I think this is probably the right call to get rid of the Aspirant this, this way. They're down to two. They lose their pump effect here. Yeah. Uh, well, they have one more in hand, so they get to do it again, which I think is kind of cool. Yes, but I think the Emperor is going to come down. Emperor's going to come down, but I think it's too little too late. They can't really go wide here. Mm. Well, they you can get rid of Thalia or yeah. create a creature. What would you if do? You if you exile something, you gain two life. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And then you could block one. Ooh, haste. <gasps> yep. Hasty, hasty. And that's game. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now that's game. That's game so one. Game one. Game one. Game one. Game one. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Fuji takes game one. Off two sideboards. On the Naya Agro side. You say here. Mean Hook Massacre? Yes. I was playing Mean Hook Massacre in Historic, and I ended up going against a. Uh, Mono Green Elves. Ooh, and, ow. And it was ow. it was hilarious because I was able to cast it for one. No, two. Yes. I was able to cast it for two, and then it was one of the lords. So every time I killed the lord, the creatures got smaller, and I ended up wiping yes. the whole board, and it was only off of a minus two trigger. I thought it was hilarious. Yep. yep. I feel that pain. Yeah. You can press nine for, and you can, uh, you can, uh, uh, F9 for the chat. Nine for the chat. I forgot what the, 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 the meme is. Yeah. I don't know either, but, uh, we're old. It's all good. I'm surprised he's not bringing in, uh, oh, maybe he is. Mm. There's a lead spellbinder, yep. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Spellbinders, they have It's just taxing uh, our opponent's hand. It's pretty much taxing, really. So it's just more of trying to slow them down enough. On the Naya side there, so. What about uh Redeem God of Worthy? I mean that also Redeem taxes taxes yeah. his hand. Yeah, Redeem would uh, do it as well. Yeah, Yasharn would probably do it as well. It's kind of unfortunate because a deck like this, you want to stay low to the ground because as soon as your opponent stumbles, you can go right underneath them, you know? Mm hmm. On the Abzan side, um, yeah, Ooh. it's, it's a, a lot of creatures, so. We are in. All right, school game two. Abzan on the play. On the play, on the play, on the play. 
Solid keep. Two wolves. Two miss. wolves. I like it. No green. No green. Two wolves, no green. Whereas, except for Spellbinder, uh, Fuji can curve right out. Turn one, turn two. Yeah, Kurt, Fuji can do all, all the things here, so. Yeah, he's got turn two turn one plays, two turn two plays. And if he finds his third land, he's got two Spellbinders. Oh, yeah. That's pretty and good. There's the, green, there's the green source right there. Ooh. That's a Thalia off the top. That was a really good play, actually, a Thalia off the top. Well, they had a Thalia, a Thalia in hand already. Oh, right. But a second Thalia is not terrible, but also a Aspirant that grows the 2-2. Right. This is the only time they can really attack in, but no, it's, they have their they have Tron now. There's oh your, yeah, there we go. The counters have now begun, mm -hmm. and now this is where that extra land would probably kick in any second. So now they're going to grow the Thalia. Say go. They have a bunch of. Now they can remove the counters, get rid of all the. Which they're not. Uh, play land. Just up this. Say go. And now next turn, they can actually play eater, remove everything off the board. But you, the downside is that you're also going to lose your own value. Uh, your own. Um... Aspirant. Aspirant. Thank you. That's the word Which I was is fine. for. I know, but like that's what's allowing the wolf to be able to yes wipe the board, right? Like mm -hmm. you want to have that recurring effect. Now they can probably say go, and this it's gonna get eater. Remove the board. Hey, how about I, how about I just uh, get one off the top and we do this all over again? <laughs> Woohoo! Special thanks to Sweet and Salty. I get to eat a uh, mermaid tail sugar cookie. Jealous. Totally. <laughs> uh, that's it. I'm speaking to your manager. <laughs> I'll go all Karen here. Come on now. James is my manager. <laughs> You're already speaking to him. <laughs> Finding a third land on turn four or five yep. is actually really tough. Yep. Now you're now you can see what's in their hand here. The Shadowing Verse is gonna be gone, but they have this Archangel which they can if they hit land next turn. This Vanishing Verse is not gonna do anything because they're gonna they can either get rid of the the expensive mm -hmm. Land, go. Okay, now they can play the Asharn. Which he top decked. Holy Batman. Like a champ. Like, oh my god. Totally. Now they can play land. Boom. Put a counter on whatever they want. Attack with the 5-5 five, five and the 3-3. Three, three. Now, Jen. Kind of smart. Got up with the 5-5. Five, five, down mm -hmm. to 4. I like that play as well. So they have a Dean, a and I think this is oh. uh, too little, too late. Who's just going to concede game two in round number? Oh, James, you're so bad at this. <gasps> round number two. <laughs> and two. <laughs> <laughs> F's in the chat. F's in the chat. Uh, ooh, I want to see Jin, the Midnight Sky, in play. That would be a cool creature to watch. Ooh, he's putting him in. No, he's not. Did he? Nope. I didn't want to see him play Count Dracula, but that's that's just me. So. Uh. Well. Count Dracula is actually a phenomenal card against aggressive decks because on turn yes. four you get to drop a planeswalker and a two three with lifelink flying, mm -hmm. which too bad it doesn't also have death touch because that would be instantly broken. Well, 
wouldn't it just make you a sandwich at the same time? <laughs> Solid keep. I like sandwiches. Oh Solid wow! Keep your. Yep. For and both sides. The, uh, both sides. Oh yeah. Aspirin and Dethalia with an ignition. Sign me up. I like it. I like it. Vanishing burst on two. Yep, vanishing. Oh, well, yep, because vanishing verse on two. Be smart. He'll play value on two, so vanishing vanishing verse won't be till three, and then by then it'll be too late because he'll play yes. the aspirant, and uh, Thalia will have grown, and yes. he'll still have an aspirant in play. But there is also a wolf. Yeah. Yeah, but that just allows Thalia to get out of range really quick. Yes, that is true. I don't know. I, I would keep this. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Let's go. Let's go. Extra, extra. Read all about it. He's got an event announcement. Yeah. But it won't be happening until turn four. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. The doctor has a wedding announcement. <gasps> the doctor has a wedding announcement. Yes, no. his wedding is in April. Are we invited? Do we have to cancel plans? <laughs> no. But I am doing the wedding cake. <gasps> That's it. We're going to have to crash the party. I like crashing parties. Is pants optional, doctor? <laughs> <laughs> I really hope so. You hope so? Pants you are... hope that pa oh, pants are optional. I guess that came out wrong. <laughs> Just Whoops. a little bit. <laughs> <I chose> <laughs> <laughs> this spellbinder is going to get rid of something here. Yeah, I don't know what to take. It all sucks. Uh, pants. <laughs> Now's a good time to go get a coffee. Yeah, she should go get a coffee. But I think they're going to probably take this archangel here, so... But there's a lot of options here that they need to get rid of here, so. Seeing that they have a third land. A fourth land, a third, their third land. They take away the Eater of Worlds. March of the Unworthy Light is gets rid of Thalia. Now they can go land into a redding. Here's my two, three. Let's -a go. So they could go a spellbinder, but didn't draw that fourth land is maybe hurting them a little bit here. They're going to go attack in, see if they can try off of the trade, which spellbinder definitely going to see goodbye to that redeem that redeem redeem or the archangel. Or even the verse two, because knowing that they don't have that fourth land. That might be an issue. Yeah, I think the Redeem's probably the better best. Ooh. Not a land. But I would say good I I'd almost be like a go. You see this vanishing verse hit the bucket, but it looks like Fuji just will follow up with a spellbinder, and this may be backbreaking right now. Which now you can just get rid of the archangel, and you know that in about three turns, two turns, there's going to be a farewell that's going to hit the great. It's going to hit the battlefield soon. But not seeing land is definitely th 
think you have to play out your land, your hand here. So, I totally agree. Now you have training. That's a swamp. You can play either the eater, mm. and then you do have a farewell. He's only got twenty three lands. Yeah. Fuji. Why not Fuji? Uh... Mind yeah, Fuji, yeah. Oh, yeah, Fuji, you don't need that many. No, I know, but still, like... Because your curve is very low. It's almost like an aggro deck-ish. Mm -hmm. Plus, also, your Naya part is kind of like all your pathways and also your um, your dual lands. Mm -hmm. So it looks like they're going to attacks, and they are going to get train the training trigger on the... Or they're gonna try to go all in on this spellbinder. Well, if he can't remove it, I mean, ooh, Thalia, that hurts a little bit there. Because even if they play this Empire, this Farewell cannot get rid of the can't be cast at this turn. I think they're gonna go with the Redeem just for blocking duty. I mean, you're pretty much dead if you don't, right? Yep. Well. I'm going to give it something indestructible, haste, trample. Does it give it trample? Believe that does. Ignition, vigilance, trample, lifelink, indestructible, haste until the end of turn. Oh, just like that, Fuji yeah. takes him down in game two, round number two. Game, yes. Oh. 